Good afternoon, uh, Dr. Loretto. This is Robin Steinberg from the National Critics' Choice. And thank you for releasing your new book on uh, Malnomics. Um, first of all, many of the audience are trying to understand, you know, uh, what's happening in today's world. It's been, there's been a lot of uh, talk about China and the United States. And they would like to try to understand, uh, in your own perception, uh, whether or not do you think the United States uh, has got any confidence left for China to believe uh, that that America is able to resolve its deficits? You know, uh, do you think the world feels the same way as China, or or not? Yeah, yeah, I think the world feels exactly the same way that the U.S. is not able to resolve its own uh, problems, economic problems, in particular as the growing deficit. But also, I would say a return to the glory of the old days of the U.S. Uh, America and Europe also are economies uh, that are going through major uh, decline um, and therefore the debt, uh, which is what is plaguing them at the moment, uh, um, is just one of the many symptoms of this uh, decline. And the world and China is very worried about that because we need a new world order. So, speaking about the new world order, China right now is, is gaining more respect and credibility from the United States as well as the world as the new economic power. And how does this change foreign policy? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it would. Um Europe and the West should do now within you know, the framework of the G20, uh, which is going to be the new uh, institution uh, that will replace the G8. They should look at China more as a business partner, more as a part of the um, new uh, world economy. <coughs> <coughs> um, which means that. We should listen also to what China suggests. Um, China, for example, has made several suggestions about how to solve the euro crisis, uh, and the Europeans are actually ignoring these uh, suggestions. Now, that is something that I think should end uh, because China is going to be the largest economy in the world within the next 10 to 15 years. Um, and also, you know, China has. Um, is plays a very important role into this economy. So therefore, decisions should be taken together with China and the other emerging markets, not only with the US and Europe. And what must the world do to face the inevitable growth of China? And what sort of wise foreign policy that the world must uh, uh, adopt? Well, I think, you know, cooperation is the key. I think uh, the Europeans and the Americans are very afraid of China, which is the great unknown, uh, because they think that China will behave as the West has behaved uh, in the past, so especially after the Industrial Revolution and in the last 200 years, uh, so colonization, hegemonic power, uh, influence over other countries. Uh, um, China is not interested in this way of being present on the global uh, um, uh, arena. Uh, on the contrary, I think uh, China is much more interested in China. Uh, and that could be, to a certain extent, also um, uh, a problem because um, within the G20, uh, China will have to take a leadership position. Um, and it is a reluctant position. I mean, China does not want to lead the world the same way that the UK and the US has led the world. Uh, so it's a different way of influencing the world. And uh, I think Western powers should learn that. So they should not put too much pressure on the Chinese uh, to be the leaders uh, as the US has been until now. Chinese communists have made better capitalists than the rest of the world uh, in your new book, Malnomics. And really, uh, what's the, stak- the stakeholders uh, going to be like for the future? You know, uh, Deng Xiaoping has made enormous you know, contributions and observations based on his visit here in, in Asia and Southeast Asia. Uh, in your perspective, what is it going to be like for the next 20 years? 
Well, I think in the next 20 years we will see the emerging power of China, uh, but it's not going to be um, a sort of world where we have one superpower. On the contrary, it's going to be a multi-polar um, world where you know we'll see also the emerging um, of countries like Brazil, for example, India, uh, Russia, so the BRICS country, emerging markets which will play an important role. And then we'll still have you know, the Western bloc, which will continue to be important. Now, for sure, China is going to be the largest, it's going to be the biggest, <laughs> the most important economy, but it's not going to be the only one. So we will have to adapt to a world that uh, has more variety, I think than the one we have lived in until today. Mm. Do you think that China is better off than India or because India is, is becoming a fast-growing market uh, itself yeah. as an emerging market uh, with over a billion people as well? Uh, what, 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 what are your thoughts about India in South Asia itself? What role do they play? Are they able to be a complement to China's growth engine? Uh, no, I don't think that India is a component uh, to China's uh, growth engine. I mean, yes, to a certain extent, the, the BRICS countries are all together, and therefore, you know, they're trading together, so we see more south-to-south -south, uh, uh, trade. But um, I think there's a major difference between India and China. The Indian model of development is the Western model of development. So India will incur in the same difficulties that the West uh, has incurred. While, you know, of course, China is a different model of development. Uh, also, I would say that there is uh, much more social tension in India than there is in China, uh, not because uh, one is a democracy and the other one is still a communist country, but I think because th there are major um, disequalities in India. Uh, so th there is a um, uh, fast growth of the economy, but in the top uh, tier of the population, so we're talking about the 1% of the population is actually getting most of the advantages of growth. So we have in India still millions of people, hundreds of millions of people who are actually starving, and that doesn't happen in China. Thank you, Dr. Loretta, uh, and thank you for your new book, Malnomics. And ladies and gentlemen, please. Uh, her book, Malnomics, is available at all go good leading bookstores right now.